test its oil processing facility. Negotiation team briefs President Kir on Addis Ababa peace talks. Egypt offers 2,500 scholarships to South Sudan. Thank you for joining us. This is SSTV News Hour. My name is Oyet Patrick. Let's now look at stories making headlines in the country. The caretaker governor of Unity State, Dr. Joseph Montuil, and the accompanying delegation inspected the new oil refinery at Manga, north of the state capital, Bentiu. Speaking to the press, Dr. Montuil said the refinery is ready for local production of oil. He called on oil workers who have not returned to work to go and resume their duties as the security situation has returned to normal. Lieutenant. the Muslim habit at the Morton, the Mokasabad Bidan, Mishad Haiwe, and the Fazal Low, the Malawiad Bidana, the Gulai. The President of the Republic, General Salva Kiir Mayardit, was briefed on Thursday by the delegation to the Addis Ababa Peace Talks on the progress made at the talks. Speaking after the meeting, the Minister of Information and Broadcasting and the official government spokesperson, Michael Markway, says the government and the rebels had agreed on the declaration of principles and draft agenda and wanted to sign, but IGAD objected to the idea, saying the seven former detainees be part of the talk. Markway, however, says the issue of the seven former detainees is now clarified. He said the Ethiopian Prime Minister stole the two delegations and the mediators that South Sudan cannot be held hostage due to the seven former detainees. The chairman of SPLM, Comrade Salva Kir Mayadid, says there is a chance for South Sudan to emerge as a strong republic and urges everyone to work for peace, unity and reconciliation. The chairman made the call on Thursday during his meeting with the delegation of the SPLM led by Comrade Jema Nunu Kumba to the intra-party dialogue. SPLM party is committed to ensuring that there is peace in South Sudan, says the chairman of SPLM, Comrade Salva Kir Mayardit, on Thursday during a meeting with the party delegation to the intra-party dialogue. Speaking after the meeting, Comrade Akol Paul says the president urged all stakeholders in the country to work for peace. And therefore, he appealed to all the members of the SPLM, the civil society organization, to embrace the spirit of peace and reconciliation. And he has uh, actually directed us to work for peace and reconciliation within the party to bring together all comrades uh, under one umbrella of the SPLM. Peace, unity, and reconciliation is the ultimate goal of the SPLM and the work of the delegation. Comrade Salva delivered this message to the delegation of the SPLM laid by Comrade Jema Nunu Kumba to the SPLM intra-party dialogue. The team briefed the chairman on the progress made as far as the dialogue is concerned. The dialogue was launched last week on Saturday in Addis Ababa in collaboration with EPDRF of Ethiopia and ANC of South Africa. And his appeal to the SPLM membership that... Uh, we are all working for peace, despite the conflict that has hit our country. Still, the SPM leadership see an opportunity beneath this conflict. 
there is still a chance for South Sudan to emerge as a strong in, uh, republic from this country. The SPLM intra-party dialogue is a forum for SPLM party members to use for resolving any party issues that members may feel are contentious. The Vice President James Waniiga met in his office with the SPLM leaders from Cholo community of Upper Nile State, led by Charles Yoro. The delegation briefed the Vice President on the condition of the inhabitants who are in the outskirts of the state capital, Malakal. Henry Jada reports. Of Cholo community in Upper Nile State reaffirmed their commitment to stance with the government of South Sudan under the elected leader, President General Salva Kiir Mayardi. The call was made in the meeting of the Vice President James Wani Iga and the SPLM members from Solo community led by Charles Yor. We have come here today. We came to give our pledge, our support, and reaffirm our commitment to start with the government of Southern Sudan, of the new Republic of Southern Sudan, in defeating the failed coup and uh, defeating the renegade Dr. Yang Misha. The Sholo community strongly condemned in the strongest term destroy, destruction of Southern Sudan and destabilization of Southern Sudan by Yang Misha. Nehna la nakbal, la nakbal, karabe junub, watafika junub. The Speaker of the Council of States, Right Honorable Joseph Bolchan, commended the nationalistic spirit embraced by the National Army in protecting the country's constitution and the citizens. Speaker Bolchan echoed the sentiment while addressing the SPLA in Upper Nile State. National Airport, Speaker Bolchan hailed the role played by the army in protecting the country from aggressors. Uh, we noted also that the, 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 the organized forces, especially the police, is not there in order to secure the town uh, internally by protecting the civilians. Chairperson of National Banks Union, Amin Akasha, says the union is planning to reopen bank branches in the conflict-affected areas. Akasha says the union is arranging to send relief items to the internally displaced persons in the state. وعندنا كمان المفاجأة الأكبر نحن عندنا وكلاء لأكبر شركة تأمين في لندن اسمها تايزر نحن بنتكلم بإيسي بشركة السمن للتأمين برضو حتفتح فروعة ده دليل وخدنا الموافقة منهم عشان نفتح فروعنا في كل الولايات المضرة دي و... Leader of minority in the National Legislative Assembly Onyoti Adigo Nyekwach called on the rebels to respect the agreement on cessation of hostilities signed in Addis Ababa to pave way for humanitarian aid to the needy. But the most important issue is to call upon the government of the Republic of South Sudan and the rebel to stop this killing, this uh, ruthless killing which is happening in all the states. I think the cessation of hostilities should be respected by both sides because what happened in Malakali is after the signing of the session was started. But we are calling upon them that they should immediately stop this and see the way forward, which, is, which I think is very important. Because most of the people in Addis now, I think there are a lot of politics. But politics will come later on. But what we are interested in now is to stop killing one another now and try to see the way forward. That is number one. Number two is to see the way, like when we went to Unimis, people are suffering. Not only inside Unimis, but other places where we get the displaced people, they are suffering, they are lacking food, they are lacking medical care, sanitation, 
of the rest. I think the delegation returned to Juba on Wednesday. Jackie Daru, SSTV. Egyptian government has offered 2,500 university scholarships to South Sudanese in various fields. The news was revealed to the Minister of Education, Science and Technology during his visit to the Egyptian capital Cairo this week. As Rejoice Tio reports, the minister has returned to Juba. Over 2,500 education scholarships to South Sudanese students in various fields. The good news was revealed to the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, Dr. John Guy Yo, during his visit to the Egyptian capital Cairo this week. The offer is to help in improving quality of education in the new nation after decades of war. Minister Dr. Guy, who led a delegation of educationalists from South Sudan, held meetings with his Egyptian counterpart to solicit ways to better education in the country. Egyptian Minister of Higher Education Dr. Walid El Degui said his government will continue supporting education sector in the country. Minister Guy, who also visited South Sudanese students sitting examinations in Cairo, said South Sudan universities will cooperate with the Egyptian government in various areas. He said the 2,500 scholarships will help the students from South Sudan to obtain better education in various fields. We requested 2,500 scholarships from Egypt. And the arrangement we are now making is if the Egyptian government uh, and if the cabinet of or the government of Egypt approve this, what will be the, the part that the government of South Sudan will play? For example, if they waive the tuition fees for the students, will we be able to pay the, uh, the accommodation and other? These are the issues we'll discuss. Dr. Guy further held a bilateral meeting with the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs in Cairo, where they discussed cooperation in the field of education between South Sudan and Egypt. For the Teachers Training uh, Institute of South Sudan and for the uh, National Secondary School, all the laboratories of those uh, schools we will need to see where the Egyptian government will, will work on. We have, of course, initial the minutes of those meetings are ready, uh, the areas of agreement, the things that will be studied. But the Reporting for SSTV News in Juba, I'm um, Rejoice Joe Samson. The government is appealing to Ethiopia to assist in sensitizing South Sudanese displaced by the last December incident so that they can return home. Upper Nile State Governor Simon Kunpoj said three commissioners are currently in Ethiopia to sensitize the displaced persons and urge for support from Ethiopia. Kunwo met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, also suggested for establishment of offices in Malakal and Gambela so that issues to do with border conflict can easily be resolved. They have concentrated their, uh, their, uh, their control, not in Malakal, but they are now far going into the eastern part of Upper Nile, which is the Wulam area and other places. And As a result of December incident that displaces thousands of citizens from Jongole, Upper Nile and Unity State, the government is now working to sensitize South Sudanese who have taken refuge to the neighboring countries. The government of Upper Nile State, Simon Kunpoch, who had a meeting with both the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Ethiopian Ambassador to South Sudan, the three commissioners from countries of Ulang, Maywood, and Nasir are currently in Ethiopia sensitizing the displays on the root cause of the incident. Say the sensitization without the involvement of Ethiopian government in matters of security will not be easy, urging the Ethiopian government to participate in bringing the displays back home. Ethiopia now is the area where uh, this uh, peace talk is. We want also to see that uh, our bordering people will have to know that uh, the peace which is now being, you know, uh, held, you know, in Ethiopia is the peace for South Sudan, and that they should help, you know, uh, in this, you know, by uh, not fighting among themselves, and that uh, we would want also to tell them that uh, the war which is going on here is not the war between the Muslims and the Dinkas, it is a power struggle, you know, within the country, uh, because our people, the community, the local community, are not aware of what is going on. So we want to see that, you know, by Ethiopia, because most of them are going to Ethiopia now as refugees, we need to educate them. And that's why we sit today with the ambassador and, uh, and our minister so that uh, we can actually see the possibilities or the modalities of how we can go around and educate our people 
in the, on the issue of what is going on, the conflict which is going on in South Sudan now. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Banaba Mara Benjamin, also met executives from the Student Union in Uganda. The meeting tackled the challenges facing South Sudanese is starting in Kampala and the possible intervention by the government. The President of the Student Union, Peter Nintut, said December incident affected 75% of the 17,000 students studying in Kampala, urging the government to embark on constructive politics. Seeing the war it happened, uh, we know as every person here in this country, the students all the time depend from the government here. So when the country is at war, and then the students, most of them, they drop out up to now. And it is, uh, it is stipulated, and we, we, we just don't hold uh, in, in our resolution last time, when we met with the old chairperson from various universities and colleges, 75 percent are affected by this current crisis. So we are trying, but uh, we try to convene the administrative, those administration in Uganda said that they have to listen on how the students are suffering in, in, in Uganda. But up to now, there's no any response. In a separate development, a group of chiefs, known as New Sudan chiefs, called for a conference for the three states of Greater Upper Nile saying there's a need to address the current crisis. The chairman of the chiefs, Francis Jackson Rock, said they stand with the government and object any person who wants to take the government by force. The director of human rights affairs in the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Kate Chol, said the Minister of Foreign Affairs will raise this issue to the relevant authorities for consideration. <laughs> the chiefs also called on the government to help establish offices for the chiefs of the 10 states in Chuba so that when such problems arise, it can be tackled easily. Martin Jerry Gabriel, SSTV News, Chuba. Medicine Sans Frontiers, MSF, an international organization operating in South Sudan, has raised concern over the congestion of UN camps by internally displaced persons in South Sudan. MSF field coordinator in Juba says the heavy downpour is a threat to the health of about 21,000 people still seeking refuge inside the UN compound, citing diarrhea and other waterborne diseases as the major threat, Jackie Darrow reports. Heavy downpour threatens the lives of internally displaced persons camping inside UN camps in Juba. The heavy rain experienced in the city over the last few days flooded area designated for internally displaced persons, prompting Medicine Saint Frontier MSF to raise alarm bell over a possible health threat, blaming UN mission in South Sudan for not giving enough space to decongest the camps. MSF field coordinator in Juba, Stephen Lelgigren says, "Unmis should speed up a plan of creating more space for internally displaced persons. Yes, well, as you all know, the, the rainy season is uh, heading this direction, uh, progressing um, day by day. And uh, a lot of the people in uh, Tonping uh, particularly are uh, stuck in a, in a flood-prone area that has been already flooded from the earlier rains uh, we had before. Uh, which resulted in uh, a lot of latrines collapsing, tents collapsing, and people actually living in, uh, in this flooded area. Uh, the UN Miss here has uh, placed a lot of energy to, to increase the space uh, in the south of the city, in UN House, which is good because it's in a drier area. Our concern has been that uh, the time frame of having that new uh, area finished in time in relation to when the rain will pick up more heavily here is, has not been uh, in line with each other. So we've asked and we've pushed for having a, a more focus spent here in Tonping, uh, in this location, to be able to relocate within the Tonping uh, Unimis compound to drier spaces, drier, drier areas, so they don't have to spend more time in these uh, very shallow uh, areas. Basically. 
the official from MSF in Juba cited diarrhea and other waterborne diseases as possible health threats to the displaced persons during this rainy season. Uh, there has been no, no real outbreaks so far, but it's a very high risk and it's a high concern of us uh, to do whatever we can to prevent this one. Uh, we're providing the healthcare. We have the space for the clinics, uh, both inpatient department and outpatient department, uh, in both these locations. Uh, so, for our concern in terms of delivering healthcare, we are well provided. Uh, but we would like to see and have asked for uh, that they reallocate more space to really decongest uh, the bad areas. Uh, and that has been a bit of a struggle uh, in terms of uh, structural issues. Uh, uh, getting permissions, etc., for new miss. Medicine Saint Frontier, MSF, an international organization operating in South Sudan, which offers medical services to the needy people, says it has increased the number of its medical staff for humanitarian response in the region, adding that there have been medical services to people in the areas affected by the political crisis. Yes, the congestion has been an issue for a long time uh, and the, the, the motion of having things actually from a suggested area to actually have that area allocated to be used for latrines, water points, showers and decongestions. The process is difficult and slow, uh, even though there are many, many people there that are aware of it and they are also f in a way fighting to have that space available. There is blockage along the road that needs to be addressed. UN estimate indicates that over 21,000 people are still seeking refuge inside Anmis compound. However, many IDPs have started returning to their respective homes after the government restored peace in Juba city and other parts of the country affected by the political turmoil which erupted in December last year. Jackie Darrow, SSTV. In a bid to promote sports in the country, the government plans to construct Juba Global Sports Center, which was proposed by the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Dr. Nadia Rop. The plan was discussed during the ministerial cluster meeting chaired by the National Minister of Health, Dr. Riak Gai Kok. Proposed by the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Dr. Nadia Arab Duding. The plan was discussed during the ministerial cluster meeting chaired by the National Minister of Health, Dr. Ria Gai Kok. In a statement after the meeting, the Deputy Minister of Education, Science and Technology, Paul McQueen, said the cluster has identified two places for the construction of the center at Nyakron and a part of Dr. Garang Museum. He said the center will reflect culture, identity, and values of the nation and symbol of unity among the citizens of this country. Ball said the project will contribute in the integrity of South Sudan. Uh, this center will contribute in fact, to the integration and the unity of people of South Sudan. Uh, it was concluded that the project is recommended for support and so it will be done. We have identified areas where it is important to be constructed. We have what we call now the Nyukran Center as one of the football places, or we may take some parts of the, of the mausoleum, Dr. John Garang mausoleum. The cluster meeting also discussed South Sudan participation in the inter-schools competition in the East African competition in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. The other we was discussed was uh, also a, a, a motion by the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. It was it is about the inter-schools competition inside South Sudan and also the participation of South Sudan in the East African uh, tournament in Dar es Salaam. It will discuss the importance was expressed as follows. First of all, if we are having this activity, the inter-schools competition inside South Sudan, it will bring all our students from every walk of life in South, South Sudan. He said the competition will bring students from across the country. Reporting for South Sudan Television, I'm Jacqueline Perino.
the Ministry of Agriculture in a joint meeting with, uh, with Food and Agricultural Organization FAO on Wednesday in a meeting chaired by the Deputy Minister of Agriculture Lili Albino Akola Kol discussed ways and means of improving agriculture in the country. The Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Cooperatives and Rural Development in joint meeting with Food Agricultural Organization FAO on Wednesday in a meeting chaired by the Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Lili Albino Akol Akol, discussed ways and means of improving agricultural activities across the country. The meeting also reviewed a report presented by Agriculture Consultant for Food and Agricultural Organization, Dr. Ian Robinson, on crop and food seminar assessment mission in South Sudan. This is the nation at the end of the major harvest of the year. Uh, that gives us an indication of the amount of food that is available in the country and whether or not it meets the specific domestic requirements. Uh, as you may consider, domestic requirements go beyond just eating. They also have to include the seeds that are going to be sown, food, the grain food that is, that may be given to animals. The Deputy Minister appreciated the food and agricultural organization FAO in boosting agriculture. Because of the crisis that we have in the, in the country, if we are not careful this year to make sure that there's enough farming that's going on, more likely we have less production last year, uh, next year, and then there's a threat of farming. And for me, this, uh, as, as, as a deputy minister, I'm sure uh, Honorable Nguyen will agree, for us it becomes a concern. So now we have to really think about what to do better to prevent. And I think this is the value of, 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 of this assessment, that if they are done right, they can also help us take uh, the right decisions. The Undersecretary of Agriculture, Jaden Tongun Emilio, said the ministry is working in collaboration with local Center for Agriculture Tools Production in Kajukeji County in Central Equatoria to provide Oxflow to increase productivity. These are samples from, uh, from Mandicolo Blacksmith's uh, workshop. Uh, they are now uh, being uh, delivered to these states. Each state would have uh, three, uh, five pieces. And uh, the, the goal is actually to boost uh, agriculture production, uh, specifically for those who farmers who would not be able to afford uh, tractors, then they will have to adapt uh, oxygen. He said will help in reduction of hunger and poverty by marketing local produce in exchange of money. Jane Awadia, SSTV News, Juba. The government has pledged to improve power supply across the country. The Minister of Electricity, Dams and Water Resources, Gemma Nunukumba, made this public after inspecting the newly installed electric poles along Haisoro Road in Juba. As Soro David reports, the Ministry of Electricity is working closely with the local authorities to improve supply of electricity in Juba City. Resource Gemma Nunukumba inspects newly installed electric poles along Haisora Road in Juba. After a certain effective power distribution in the city, after a rainstorm broke down electric distribution line last month, causing power blackout in some residential areas in Juba. This committee has tried their best, as we promised to the people of uh, Haisora, that we will try our best as a ministry to restore uh, electricity uh, to the area. Because electricity is uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an important sector which has a lot of impact on the citizen, on the livelihood, on the socioeconomic development of the country. So we put a lot of uh, importance to the electricity sector and also the water sector because it's a service area. So we are able now, we have been able to complete this. We have put uh, concrete poles manufactured by local uh, companies in Juba and as you can see people are happy because this one uh, has a long lifespan. The minister pleads government commitment to improve power supply in the country, adding the plans are underway to bring construction of hydroelectric dam in Fula Falls in Nimule. Our main uh, reliable source of energy is the Fula uh, hydropower 
project which is in the pipeline. As you are aware, we were supposed to start by May, the construction of uh, Fuller, Fuller Rapids, but because of the crisis, uh, this has delayed a little bit, but it is still uh, on progress. Resident of Asora in Juba, Resident of Asora in Juba welcomes the contribution made by the government to light up the streets in the homes and in the city. So al kara by jama, fiu shu al katir. Kara bade bishagal, ya jat fi buyut, mungan bishagal, mab bag mungan bishagal fi mukefat kita lajat fi kira. So kara bade wa hamia kebira fi bade. Mu al kara bade, de min min ham majat fi bade lazim ya mule. So I'm done al biakud kamsin sana arbain sana. De la la mu del kongred, la mu del kongred. De la sa zinu yemchi besiyadu betadu uzar al kara bade. Fi hada land. Electric supply across the city comes from generators installed at the power plant at the bank of the river Nile in Juba. The launch of electricity in Juba city today, where you can see the development and improvement of electricity in Juba city, where businesses are booming, wherever people are working. The SSTV News, Soro David, Haisora. Jongle State Parliament has opened for the first time since the failed coup attempt of December 15, 2013, and its resultant conflict which devastated the country. The opening ceremony of the parliament was attended by a large number of state MPs, and in attendance was also the Jongle State caretaker governor. Jongle State Parliament has opened for the first time after Riek Machar's rebellion which devastated the country and significantly ravaging the state capital Bor. The opening ceremony of the parliament was attended by a large number of state MPs headed by their caretaker Governor John Kong. The State Legislative Assembly has elected Right Honorable Peter Deng Aguer as the Speaker of the State and Honorable Moses Mayul Bol as the State Deputy Speaker. Speaking during the event, the State Caretaker Governor his Excellency Lieutenant General John Kong Nguyen said his government will work hard with the State Assembly to bring peace to the state and ensure IDPs go back to their normal lives. It is a test to our being. And I thank very much the members who were in National Assembly. He really, it has given me and shown to your own communities in Jongle State, not only your counties, a signal of commitment that you left where you could be taken care of and you came to embody yourself to the problems of your nation. And this is what? And that I shall obey. In a related development, the state government has appointed six commissioners for six counties. The appointed commissioners took oath of office before the state caretaker governor, General John Kong, and the state council of ministers in Bortown. <laughs> 